I want to do a little kind of part two to the, the video I did on reprobation or the reprobate doctrine. I preached about it years ago, but uh, just did a little video showing Anderson's cult and how they get into this thing of this doctrine of reprobation. And uh, it's Calvinistic is what it is. It's also Augustinian. Very interesting. On uh, Wikipedia, it says here reprobation in Christian theology is a corollary to the Calvinistic or broadly Augustinian doctrine of unconditional election, which teaches that some of mankind, the elect, are predestinated by God for salvation, and the remainder of the reprobate are left to be condemned to damnation in the lake of fire. When a sinner is so hardened as to feel no remorse or misgiving of conscience, it is considered a sign of reprobation. Now, of course, the Anderson cult would say, we don't believe in unconditional election. Okay, but the doctrine of reprobation would still line up with total depravity. Somebody's totally depraved, he can't get saved, and also limited atonement. You know, the blood of Jesus Christ is only there, you know, for the people that haven't sinned really bad. It's just the people that have sinned kind of, they just general knowledge of that they're sinners. They, you know, sodomite or other sex perverts, they can't get saved. Only those that have not sinned that bad, you know, crazy, absolutely crazy. It's kind of like the Pharisee and he's standing there in the temple and he's saying, I'm not, I thank God that I'm not as other sinners as this publican here. That's what this doctrine of reprobation is all about. But you Type in just type in reprobate doctrine on YouTube, and it comes up with Anders Snake there. Understanding the reprobate doctrine, Jack Hiles explains reprobate doctrine. What a big surprise, you know. Joe Major, Faith Baptist Church, Tommy McMurtry, this guy here, this guy's somewhat of a sissy and whatever else, but you know, uh, false reprobate doctrine. Lacey standing against that. Uh, ben the Bathlick here, Ben the Baptist, reprobate road. Proof sodomites cannot get saved. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Jesus' blood isn't there to pay for their sins. It's gone. It's too much. The blood can't pay for their sins. It's incredible. Um, incredibly evil is what I'm saying. Uh, defending the reprobate doctrine. What is the reprobate and can they be saved? Ben the Baffleck again. Donnie Romero. Uh, our mirror channel there. King James with the ministry's mirror channel. Um, again, again, down through here. Ben the Baffleck, Steadfast, Jacksonville. A Verity Baptist Church, little Jiminy Cricket out in California. I don't know what that guy's deal is. Um, the reprobate doctrine explained this little kid here. Um, again, another Ander Snake zombie. Can't think for himself. Um, the immorality of reprobates. That's the video I showed some clips from there. Again, Ander Snake. This guy here, I don't remember what his name is. Another one of Ander Snake's little zombie spinoffs. Um, you know. Again, I'm not even sure who all these people are, but there's my video that I brought out on my channel. But, you, you know, you just get down through here. It's primarily Anderson's little zombies, either Anderson himself or one of his little followers. It's just so interesting to me that they'll stand against this, or they'll, they'll stand for the reprobate doctrine, but then they stand against Calvinism. And, you know, it's funny because uh, he came out with this thing here, defeating Calvinism, Calvinism documentary teaser. And they're showing these, you know, wicked thing of Calvinism, which is true. Calvinism is very wicked. Calvinism is a satanic cult. Absolutely, beyond any shadow of a doubt. Um, and there's a whole lot more I could say on that, but I'm not going to get into it right now. But Calvinism is evil. It's satanic. But we believe in the reprobate doctrine. You know, and this guy believes in it. So how can you stand against Calvinism when you believe two of the points yourself? Limited atonement and total depravity. That's what the reprobate doctrine is. See? And, and, and again, you know, think about what's going on here with this reprobate doctrine. Somebody's a reprobate, they can't get saved, well then what's the sense in letting them live? They're a heretic. Again, right there, it's an Augustinian doctrine. Uh, Martin Luther was an Augustinian monk. Right? These people are Catholic. That's what I've been saying for years now. Anderson is a covert Catholic. All these guys are. They believe in Reformed theology. That the church has replaced the Jews, the nation of Israel. They believe in post-trib rapturism. Uh, the Catholic Church, the, the catechism, teaches that you go through, the church has to enter a final time of purification. It's in the catechism. I've taught on that for years and years and years. These people are covert Catholics, is all they are. Jesus went to hell and burned. Well, so I guess we have to go there too and, you know, 
purgatory kind of a thing or something. See? And uh, Anderson worked with Roman Catholics in South Africa. Actual Roman Catholics. The Universal One Church. A guy named Bogart. So here, you know, all he'll, he'll preach against Roman Catholicism, and then he goes over to South Africa and works with a Catholic. So that's what's going on. Don't listen to this hypocrite, this lying snake right here. Uh, this whole group here, uh, they're they're just wicked. And, and let me just say one other thing. It's too, it's very funny. I'll show you here. Here you have this heretic and this heretic, and he's you know a, a you know free will, um, easy believism, free grace type of a deal. You know, there's no repentance of sin. You can just come to, to the Lord as you know, just a general knowledge of, of I'm a sinner. He would probably say a sinner's prayer, you know, type of deal. He's not a hyper dispensationalist. But it's the whole free grace, no repentance of sin, no change life after salvation type of crowd. Whereas James White and his ilk are the Lordship salvation type. Uh, the again that if he's you know Jesus has to be completely Lord of, of everything there and sinless perfection that proves that you're one of the elect or something like this God grants you repentance and all this stuff uh, I've never stood for either one of those I've stood against both of those movements and yet they try to lump me in with Lordship salvation people that do that are completely ignorant of what Lordship salvation really is Lordship salvation is sinless perfection after salvation uh, I never taught that Okay, the changed life that comes means God changes your life, but that doesn't mean that you are living without sin. Why would I preach against certain sins and, and say about in a Christian's life if you're sinlessly perfect? It doesn't make any sense. Okay, when you get saved, you will still sin. Right? Uh, the changed life is the Lord's going to come in there and he's going to start to change things. And it's going to take years and years and years of sanctification sometimes for you to get out of certain sins. So, but when I see, you know, when I see doctrinal error in somebody, I say, eh, I have to start questioning their salvation. And when I see that there's no conviction over certain very egregious sins, there's no struggle there. There's no chastening of the Lord for those people being in those sins. Then, yeah, I'm going to start to say, I don't know. Did it take? And again, I'm trying to get people to examine themselves and to say, okay, I don't know. I mean, I had to examine myself at one point in time. I wasn't genuinely converted. I wasn't born again. I never experienced anything supernatural. It was all just a little, say the prayer and you're done. You're That's it. You can live however you want. You know, just go to church. <laughs> so I just found that to be very, very funny that you get these two different groups, easy believism and lordship salvation represented by the Calvinists. And they're fighting with each other you know and, and where's a position from Bible Bible believing Christian right in the middle we're not part of work salvation Lordship salvation and we're not part of work salvation again if they're both work salvation it's just the one you have to be you know sinlessly perfect the other one is you just can't preach certain things and then that proves that you're saved it's crazy so that is gonna be it Thank you for watching. Don't be deceived by either of these movements.